Uh, if, the, if a legislator does not have the opportunity to vote on the issue, uh, we really don't know if they're a yes or a no. Uh, we obviously can support and we should support politicians who have sponsored and co-sponsored and continue to do this type of work uh, during the legislative process, but ultimately, uh, until we get a yes or no vote from them, uh, we really can still work on turning them. Uh, so this is an important issue. It's one that we found has overwhelming public support. Uh, industrial hemp. So it's easy to talk about industrial hemp. It's easy to talk about how we could make a biofuel from this product. It's very easy to get somebody to see that some sort of reform is needed with the marijuana law. So the number again is HR 1831. We do have some information up here available on that bill also. Uh, the next bill that gets introduced is very important also. Uh, it's HR 1983. Again, these are federal legislation. Uh, support the state's medical marijuana patient act. Um, what this is, is this is a bill where federal lawmakers have again reintroduced legislation that is going to provide for the additional and necessary legal protection uh, for states that authorize medical marijuana patients. Again, this is not the first time this type of legislation uh, has been in, uh, introduced. The House Bill 18, uh, 1983, uh, again, which is the state's medical marijuana patient protection act, would, would ensure that medical cannabis patients in states that have approved its use will no longer fear federal prosecution or arrest. Uh, this, and basically what it states is that no provision of the Controlled Substance Act shall prohibit or otherwise restrict any state in which marijuana may be prescribed or recommended by a physician for medical use under applicable state law. Uh, the measure also calls for the uh, expedited rescheduling review by the federal government uh, that would re reclassify uh, cannabis from Schedule 1 to Schedule 3 uh, under the Federal Controlled Substance Act, which recognizes the plant's accepted medical use, and it should also help streamline the federal process, uh, the federal approval process for any additional marijuana research. Uh, as Gary mentioned, there's already 16 states. I'm thinking soon to be 17. I mean, I really feel good about Wisconsin. The work I've done in the past year indicates that it's a public policy that people support. Um, I work with legislators behind the scenes, both Democrats and Republicans, have shown me that they support the issue. What we need to do is give them the courage in order to talk about it. A lot of them will say a lot of stuff behind closed doors, but as soon as we get them on camera, uh, we have a no comment or whatnot. So it's up to us to give them the courage to take on this people's issue. Um, the, you know, this, this, this time, um, it's really that we allow uh, our system to work the way it was intended. You know, that if states are making decisions, federal, the federal government should stay out of states' rights. You know, they should allow these states to make their decisions. And that's part of the importance of uh, H.R. 1983. But all more important is the federal government has introduced uh, a historic bill. And what do I mean by historic? It's historic because it's the first time there's been active legislation to introduce to end federal marijuana prohibition for all. To end it completely. To allow states to make these decisions. The bill is called H.R. 2306. And again, lawmakers for the first time have introduced legislation in Congress that seeks to end federal criminalization of the personal use of marijuana. H.R. 2306, which is entitled Ending Federal Marijuana Prohibition Act of 2011, prohibits the federal government from prosecuting adults who use or, or, use or possess marijuana by again removing the plant in its primary psychoactive THC from the five schedules of the United States Controlled Substance Act of 1970. Under the present law, all varieties of marijuana, uh, all varieties of the marijuana plant are defined as an illicit Schedule I controlled substance and, as un and defined as possessing a high potential for abuse and currently no accepted medical use in treatment. Uh, H.R. 2306 seeks to federally deregulate the personal possession and use of marijuana by adults. It also marks the first time that members of Congress have introduced legislation to eliminate the federal criminalization of marijuana since the passage, or the, since the yeah, since the passage of uh, Marijuana Tax Act of 1937, which essentially made marijuana illegal. The language in this act mimics the changes enacted by Congress when they repealed the federal prohibition of alcohol. Uh, the passage of this measure would remove the existing conflict between the federal laws and those of the 16 states that allow for the limited use of marijuana by a physician's supervision. 
It would also allow state governments that wish to fully legalize and regulate the responsible use, possession, and production of marijuana for all adults to do so without federal interference. Uh, the federal criminalization of marijuana had failed to reduce the public's demand and access to cannabis. It also has imposed uh, enormous financial and human costs upon the American people. We touched on that today already. It is time for the failed public policy. It is time to end the failed public policy and to provide state governments with the freedom to enhance alternative strategies. And the terms that we use are medical, medicalization, decriminalization, and or legalization. And we want states to experiment this without running afoul of the federal law. I'm going to ask all of you to please urge your, urge your, um, your elected officials to either sponsor or co-sponsor H.R. 2306. As we work and unite together, those are the things that we're going to have to constantly do. If you come across something in the field out there that you find important, whether it be a study, a statistic, how much the war on drugs has cost us. You read a newspaper uh, article about a family like this that's been tormented. You need to share that with your elected officials. If you found out about it, chances are they don't even know about it. Not only do you need to communicate it with them once, you need to communicate it with them again and again and again. You need to fax them, you need to email them, you need to phone call them, you need to visit them in their district, you need to visit them uh, when they're uh, in Madison. Uh, you, what we need to do is, again, we need to put pressures on all fronts. What we have is we have some information up here. Um, three, all three bills are important uh, to support. To expedite our process today, we've uh, made a signature form that you're able to sign and express uh, express support of all three of those legislation pieces of legislation which I just spoke about. On the top of the form, uh, if you don't know who your elected official is, your state assembly rep or your state senator, uh, we can certainly fill that in back uh, when we take it to the office. But what we need you to do is we need you today to sign up for your support of HR 2306. Uh, the normal representatives and the people working uh, for marijuana reform behind Wisconsin uh, will either fax or deliver these uh, important support forms to the elected officials uh, that, that really are, that, uh, um, that are elected to serve you. We would ask that you follow up with us on the Northern Wisconsin Normal blog. Stay in touch with us. Let us know if you if and when you receive a response for your from your legislator, uh, so that we're able to document this, so that we're able to keep these people accountable, uh, and like I said, keep the awareness going. So I thank you for your time today. It was great to see everybody out here. Uh, we have a couple other things that we are giving away. I think I have enough of them here. Uh, otherwise, the first 50 people who are, I guess, up here that are going to sign up for the signature form, we have this little comic that we've been using. It's actually on the normal. Wisconsin Normal blog also, and what it does is it talks about two things, how to stay out of trouble and what to do if you do get in trouble. So they're a very useful tool. Um, if you are online, feel free to go ahead and get them off there. Um, let's pass them around to the people who aren't online. Gary, in closing here, Gary did mention, again, that the Jackie Rickard Medical Marijuana Act is going to be reintroduced. This is the time for Wisconsinites to get active, both locally and on the state level. Um, since we've been working on this, or since I've been involved, I came aboard in about 2009. Uh, over the course of about 12 months, uh, I worked with a lot of leaders throughout Wisconsin, and we actually put together something called the Medical Marijuana State Structuring and Tax Plan. Uh, what we did is we kind of took the best of the best. We brainstormed, we said, okay, if I had the rule, if I could make the rules today, how would I structure a plan? How would I compose it? How would I tax it? How wouldn't I tax it? Who would I allow to have it? How much would I allow people to grow? So we played around with this, and we actually shared it with legislators during the Jackie Rickard uh, Medical Marijuana Act campaign. A lot of them took it to heart, and just the sheer, it turned out to be about a nine-page document, but the sheer information in there um, was overwhelming to them because they have not thought about this. A lot of the legislators that we ran into had thought if they voted yes to the Jackie Rickard Medical Marijuana Act, they were voting yes or that they were endorsing that marijuana is medicine.